Let's take a look at some of the concepts before our first lab, running your first Docker containers. So what are containers? Containers are nothing more than a process or a group of processes that are running in isolation. So these processes are running on a shared kernel and the isolation is provided by a kernel feature called Linux namespaces. So Linux namespaces give um, the group of running processes an isolated view of resources of that kernel. So for example, the PID namespace gives you isolated view of process IDs. The user namespace gives you an isolated view of user and group IDs. Meanwhile, another feature of the kernel, control groups, um, limit and monitor their resources to these containers. So containers are nothing more than um, these processes that are um, running inside of Linux namespaces and monitored by the control groups. So when you first start to learn containers, a lot of people will make the comparison of virtual machine versus a container. And there is a huge difference. So with virtual machines, um, virtual machines run on a hypervisor. And each virtual machine includes a full-blown operating system on each instance running on the same host. Virtual machines are very heavy, relatively, and they're slow to start. Containers, on the other hand, they don't include a full-blown operating system. They only include a set of OS-specific files. Um, this can be trimmed down based on the needs of the application. M remember, containers are just processes. They run on a shared kernel with other containers. And the isolation between the containers is provided by Linux namespaces. So these Linux namespaces are a feature of the kernel itself. So containers, um, because they run on top of the kernel and they use Linux namespaces, they're very fast to start. And containers are very lightweight because they don't include full-blown operating systems. So we get the benefits of virtual machines, such as the isolation, without the cost of the heaviness that comes with the VM. More on that later. You'll see a little caret sign uh, with VM question mark on the lower right. So containers don't replace virtual machines. It's not one or the other. Rather, containers can be run directly on top of your virtual machines. Containers often complement your existing virtual machine infrastructure. Um, and then you can add the benefits of using containers on top of that. So, so far we've actually just been talking about containers and nothing to do with Docker itself. The namespaces and the control groups that have been a part of the Linux kernel have been there for over 10 years, which is longer than Docker has been around. But the problem with using containers, Linux containers, is that the tooling for using containers um, is really lacking. And that's really what we need for this technology to be usable in our everyday applications. So that's where Docker comes in. Docker enabled containers to, is tooling to enable the containers for use by the masses. It allows developers and operators to package their applications using containers and integrate directly into their CICD pipelines. And this gives us the build once, deploy anywhere model um, for uh, building and deploying our applications. So why should you care about learning Docker? Well, there's a number of advantages to using Docker containers. The first one is that you avoid the works on my machine, my machine problem. Because we're packaging up our applications with all of the, the dependencies that, that our application needs to run, when we ship our image to different environments, we're guaranteed that it's going to work the same way in each environment. Rather than dealing with a problem with environmental drift, which comes with long-standing environments, um, you will update your image and then ship updates. Well, you'll, you'll do environmental updates directly to a Docker image and then ship updates to that image to every environment that you deploy to. So Docker containers are very lightweight and they're very fast. Um, I mentioned that you get the some of the isolate you get the isolation benefits of using virtual machines, but now that we're using containers, it's so lightweight and it's so fast that we can actually use this to package our applications and automate into CACD. We can ship this and run this 
to all of our different environments. Using containers also gives us much better resource utilization over VMs. We can tack many, many containers onto a single underlying host and use a more, we get a much more efficient use of our infrastructure. Ultimately, this means that we're saving money. Containers provide a standard developer and operators interface. So that means that if you have developers running Python applications, Java applications, Node applications, you don't have to, it's much easier to deploy those applications to all of our different environments um, because we provide a standard interface, which is just using Docker Run um, to run in all of our all of our different machines. Docker also provides an ecosystem, or there's an ecosystem around Docker that's contributed for by the community, which will solve or help you solve a lot of the generic problems that you might have, such as how to do container orchestration. Taking event, full advantage of these open source projects or um, possibly paid projects for vendors will will help you uh, solve a lot of your issues, or will help you let other people solve a lot of your issues so that you can focus on specific problems for your business. Now, I think that's enough for now for introductory on containers. You can now move on to lab one for your first hands-on experience for running your first Docker containers.